Thank you all for coming this morning, and we're going to go through the uh, 2019 open enrollment, uh, 2019 plan year benefit changes. Uh, and actually, let me say that there are no changes, so uh, so we're very excited about that. But I'm going to allow Matt Bidwell from MSI to go through that information. We also have two additional presenters, and I'll allow them to introduce themselves as they come up. And look forward to this information, Matt. Thank you again for coming. I ain't that tall. Good morning, Frederick. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Everybody awake? Everybody's glad their insurance isn't going up? Um, my, again, my name is Matt Bidwell. I'm with MSI Benefits. Again, thank you all for being here. Uh, behind me, you'll see the open enrollment dates. Uh, we're going to be on site next week. Um, we've looked online, and of the 900-plus employees, we've already had over 150 of you of the employees go online and actually confirm their insurance benefits already. And so you've got the information last week. You're able to go in and, uh, and many of you do go on to the website and actually confirm your benefits. And it's important that everybody does confirm benefits. Um, if indeed you have questions, you just like to reaffirm what your benefits are, we are going to be on site next week at, on this schedule. The schedule is inside your open enrollment packet. So you can see that we're going to be here Monday uh, here, here at the courthouse downstairs, the sheriff's office on Tuesday and Thursday, back in here on Wednesday, and at the fire department. Regardless of where you work, you are welcome to come to any of these uh, sessions. So you may not work in the fire department, but you're welcome to come out there on Friday if indeed that's what's convenient for you. So uh, we look forward to seeing you all. And again, uh, great news, there's no changes in our medical, our dental, or our vision. That means there's no change in the benefits, and there's no change in the cost that you'll be paying for your insurance in 2019. We'd just like to uh, give you a quick overlay, the benefits. You're offered two plans. The two plans are very, very similar in nature. One of them is a gatekeeper HMO, where you actually will pick a primary care doctor that primary care doctor is going to show up on your ID card. And uh, when you do get sick, you'll have to funnel your care through that doctor. Uh, and and uh, we have about half the employees that, that choose this, this uh, uh, program. For those of you who uh, would like a little bit more freedom, you can go with the open access plan. This plan does not require you to pick a primary care doctor. And it does allow you to see doctors that are not in the Blue Cross Blue Shield network. Um, uh, so if you do wish to go outside the network, there is benefits for it, although the benefits are at a little bit lower level. So you've got a choice of two plans, the gatekeeper HMO or the open access point of service plan. Our cost on the benefits, the HMO plan is a little bit less expensive than the open access. And again, these are the same contributions that we have for the current year. Uh, the numbers that we're showing are bi-weekly. There may be a few people in here who are paid monthly, and these are the same costs just uh, uh, multiplied to get to your monthly salary. If indeed you use tobacco, there's a $25 surcharge per pay period for, for the tobacco use. Uh, and again, if you've used tobacco in the last 90 days. Some of you all may be covering a spouse. And when you go through the open enrollment, we're going to ask you three questions. We're going to ask you, are you covering your spouse? We're going to ask you, is your spouse employed somewhere else? And we're going to ask you, does your spouse have coverage where he or she works? If you answer yes to all three of those questions, then there will be an additional spousal church surcharge on your plan, which is another $25. And again, uh, uh, if you have questions on that, you know, we're here after after. Uh, the, we're done with the presentation. Be happy to answer any of those questions for you. How many, time, how many years have we been with Blue Cross? Maybe seven, eight, nine years. And it's always been Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia. Well, beginning January 1, they're taking the name of their parent company, which is Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. So beginning January 1, you're, everybody's going to be getting new ID cards, and you're going to be seeing the new ID card come in. It's going to have your same uh, uh, member number. It's going to have the same group number. 
The phone numbers are going to be the same. You're going to see a, maybe a little bit different web address, but it's now going to be the branding of the corporate parent, which is Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Be aware that if you do go on the website and you go to the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia dot uh, uh, website, when you type that in, it'll actually take you to Anthem. So it's still it's still going to work for a little while, but just be used to the fact that we're now going to be known as Anthem and not Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia. Um, I'm going to ask Felicia to come up here because we, we while we don't have any changes in the benefits, we're trying to take a little bit different role this year in terms of trying to uh, communicate to everybody how the benefits work. And there's some really good information out there. It's just a matter of trying to help people get in touch with it. And so for that, we're going to bring Felicia up here, and she wants to talk to you a little bit about the Engage Wellbeing app with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Thank you so much, Matt, for that wonderful introduction. Um, first and foremost, thank you for another year with us. Um, without you, there's no us. So we greatly appreciate your business for this next upcoming year of 2019. And let's talk about some of those new swag things that we have on tools and resources that can help you along the way. So as you're noticing with our screen here, it's called the Engage app. This is an opportunity to have just all the information at your fingertip. All of us pretty much are loving our cell phones. We're loving to look up things, and this is going to be a wonderful opportunity for you to also, at your fingertips, be able to access your benefits. Track your claims. Also get a snapshot of your ID card. So if you're one of those that I left my card at home, oh my goodness, I need to go to the retail health clinic, get an urgent care visit, you're right there with your cell phone helping you along the way to get that process and service need taken care of. So i like to point out to you a few things. Under this Engage app, you'll have the opportunity not only to look at your claims, look at your temporary ID card image, you can also have the capability to have reminder messaging. So one of the things that we want to do and be a better um, fiduciary for you, I can do it, is getting you reminder messaging of things to tell you like you haven't had your annual physical from this time last year, you're one week late. We'll push off reminders to you such as that. We are looking at your claims on the back end. So that means we're looking at some of the things you've done in the last year in regards to pharmaceutical needs, we may say that we see a cheaper me medication out there that you can use that saves you money. All of those will be alerts that will be pushed off to you, all in conduit of you signing up, because now it can't push off to you and you haven't signed up and downloaded the Engage app. So if you're a person who has an Android form, you can do the Google. If you're an Apple user, like a lot of us are, you also have the Apple Store to download this Engage app to your phones. Because you have to take the first step of initiative, and that's downloading this app to your phone. It will be available for you starting January 1, 2019, as that new tool pushed off to you. If you notice here, let's talk about a couple of things. If you're a person who's definitely into fitness, we will sync up your fitness watches that you're using. This will be a capability also as well to push off that maybe you haven't had enough sleep if you want to download our sleep app. It also will be a capability app available to you to do fitness routines. You can do some challenges. All of these are elements, tools, resources, all on the way to better you and your health. So that's going to be a new app. Please try it out. I'm going to do another slide for you, and I want you to see how it's going to interconnect. On this particular slide here, I want to bring your attention about some of those things I mentioned about wellness and fitness. If you notice here, if you're one of the individuals that's tied to the Fitbit, if you're tied to our Garmin, all of those can sync up to this Engage app. I want to bring your attention for all the individuals who currently today are on the dental plan. We do have what we call a dental wellness capability. This is not only just for you, it's for all of your dependents that you have tied to the plan. So your spouses and your children also can have this download to their um, phone and capability. I want to bring your attention to one more thing that you may not be aware of that's going to be available for you. It's called our My Health Advantage. This is a wonderful tool. I've been talking about saving money. This also will help you along the way. So with this being said, any kind of avenues that we as Anthem can see that will bring back opportunities of savings we're going to push it off to you, not only by the Engage opportunity, we'll also send you reminders in the mail. So we'll, we'll do reminders there as well, and it's called our My Health Note. 
So you'll get some touch points in a lot of different avenues. So that means if you download the app, we'll do mobile capabilities. And a lot of us like that better than the mail. So we'll also follow up with back-end mail as well. Um, another opportunity here is that we're going to bring to your attention any tests. So that means if you're a woman like myself, and I won't give my age, but if you're an age-appropriate female and we're saying it's time for you to do that mammogram, it's time to do that test. We'll send it to you on a My Health note, and we'll also push it off to you through the mobile capability if you download the Engage app. All of those are things to keep you healthy, going strong, and keep going with endurance all along the way. So we want to bring that to your attention. These are things that will be coming, and please look out for them. Let's bring to your attention one more thing, and that's called Live Health Online. How many have um, sort of done the Live Health Online, downloaded the app? Fabulous. Well, let's get all of these hands up. I want to see them all up eventually. <laughs> so we want to definitely download this as well. How this will work, though, under the Engage app, it will be already tied to you. See, right now you have it downloaded this year as a separate app on your phone. But under the Engage app in January 1, 2019, it will already be embedded. So that means when you log into your Engage app, you already have Live Health Online going to be right there waiting for you just to initialize the link. So let's bring some reminder messaging along the way with the Live Health Online. This is an opportunity for you to have a video chat with your doctor for minor medical occurrence needs. It's a $10 copay. But if you're a person that's at 11, 12 o'clock at midnight, and you're like, I've got this fever, I can't break it, why not do a $10 copay? You're right there on your sofa in your own home and surroundings. All you have to do is sign up, do the link, and this will be on your Gage app. Go ahead, initialize Live Health Online, do your $10 copay, and then you have that video chat one-on-one -on -one with the doctor. It's an opportunity for not only you to um, talk about any of their current needs and all the things you've done, but if they ever need to push off a prescription, they have the capability to do that as well if one is needed. It's for uh, minor service needs, so it's not going to be if you're having a heart attack, don't use that for Live Health Online. That's one you need to go to the emergency room on. But it's ones that's like minor, so that would be um, the fever. It could be a rash. Um, anything that's minor such as that, and you're in those late hours where your retail health clinic's not available, your urgent care centers are closed, but you do have that capability in your bed to have that conversation with a doctor. And what they would do is at the end of that service need, they'll push off exactly what they discuss with you and any kind of prescriptions needs. So you can have that printout to take with you on your next doctor's visits for them to put in their file. It's a wonderful service. I've utilized it, and it was great. And I'll just use myself as an example. When I did Life Health Online, my service was done within like 12 minutes or less. There's not long wait times. You get to pick and choose the doctor you want. They'll give you all their credentials, a picture of them. You can sort of see they're at John Hopkins, where they got their degree, and you pick which one you would like to have your video chat with. It wraps up seamless process. I love it. So please, for the ones only at three or four hands up, definitely utilize that and have it on your phone because you never know when you'll need it. So I'd like to bring that to your attention, and they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that means even on your holidays and you're there with your family and you have a need, they're there waiting on your conversation through video chat. All right, is that bring you back to Matt? Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia. Um, Want to talk about health and wellness incentives. Um, this has been a challenge. Uh, we've had a couple of hiccups on this over the, uh, we first put it in in 17 and 18, we're completing the, uh, the second year of it. But the county does have a, a health and wellness program, and this is all claim driven, so that when you go and get your annual physical, you get your flu shot, you get a colorectal screening, a mammogram, that you actually earn incentives, and these are all claim based rewards. Um, there is one, one of the rewards where you send in your biometric screening where you are required to go to the website, pull down the form, take it to your physician, and have them fax it in. And so there, the, the, one, the biometric screening form does require you to actually go online and get it, but you can earn up to uh, several hundred dollars in incentives uh, just simply by uh, uh, taking care of yourself. So we're trying to encourage good behavior. I do have um, uh, Sue Croce here from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, and when we get toward the end, I'm going to let uh, uh, she'll be available to answer any questions that y'all may have on the My Incentive account. Other benefits. 
Our dental plan is going to remain with Blue Cross with no change. The same thing, uh, you're going to have a base plan and a buy-up plan. And I think we have about half the employees who actually buy the additional coverage. The vision coverage is also continuing with Blue Cross, again, with no changes on that. And um, the, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners actually provides every employee with one times your annual salary on basic life insurance. And again, this is going to continue with you all not having any action on your own. We do ask that when you do your open enrollment at the very last screen before you see your summary of benefits, you are asked to update your beneficiary to make sure that your life insurance is, is uh, sh sh should there be an event that you do have the right beneficiary listed. The disability insurance, Douglas County pays 100% of your long-term disability. If you're out of work, you uh, uh, can't work uh, on a permanent disability, your 60% of your salary is guaranteed by the uh, county through the long-term disability. We have a number of people here who also purchase short-term disability. And during this year's review, we were able to get a substantial reduction on the cost of the short-term disability. Now, you might have already done your open enrollment and you might see your cost increase, but there's a couple of things that causes the cost to change. One, your salary goes up. That's going to be buying more disability. You're getting more disability. And number two, the disability is based on our age, so that when you have certain birthdays, such as when you turn 40, when you turn 45, when you turn 50, 55, and 60, the cost does go up on the short-term disability. And so you may see a, a slight increase, but we think about 80% of you are actually going to see a decrease in the actual cost of your disability at this year's open enrollment. You also have the ability to purchase supplemental coverage through uh, uh, accident coverage and critical illness that's available through AFLAC. And again, just go online, follow the prompts. If you have questions on those policies, please come to open enrollment. We'll be happy to, to take you through any of the intricacies on it, either of those plans. This is the, uh, the last benefit on the screen is the flexible spending account. The flexible spending account allows you to put money into a tax-free account to cover any item that your insurance doesn't pay 100% for. And this is going to be your deductible, it's going to be your co-insurance, it's going to be your co-pays. And while you may only have single coverage here, your flexible spending account is applicable to any family member that you have. So you may not have your spouse or your kids on coverage, but if they have unreimbursed medical, dental, or vision expenses, you can actually use your flexible spending account for those charges for them. Your flexible spending account is the one item that is on the menu that if you decide not to go through and do your open enrollment, that benefit cannot be transferred to next year. So if you signed up for it in 2018 and you decide not to go through and confirm your benefits for 2019, thinking that everything's gonna be the same, well, your medical, dental, your life, all that will remain the same but the flexible spending account must be re-elected by you every year in order to maintain it. Employee communications. We, we were talking about the Engaged app. We want to reach out to everybody and make sure that you, you're aware of what's going on. And so this year, we're going to ask you if you would like to be available to receive text messages from the county when they have an important message regarding your benefits. So you're going to be asked to provide your mobile phone number, and you're going to say, yes, I do want to receive text messages, or you're going to say, no, don't send them to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of times I make a doctor's appointment, and day before I get a text message saying, don't forget to be here. And um, uh, the county would like to have that ability to communicate with the employees. It seems like I get so many doggone emails, I don't read them anymore, but it seems like the text messages... I, if I want to get in touch with somebody, if I want to talk to my wife, I text her. I mean, you know, that's, that's how you, you communicate today. With my kids, you have almost have to text. Um, and so we're going to ask you if you would provide us your, uh, your phone number so we can send you it. It would be coming from the county, a text message. If any time along the way you agree to do it, on every text message it gives you the opportunity to unsubscribe any time. So uh, we'd like you to actually sign up, try it. If it becomes what you feel is an annoyance, you can 
you, you get rid of us, but uh, we would like you to actually uh, participate in the texting if you can. Uh, online open enrollment, I think this is about the fourth or fifth year that we've done it online. There's no change in it. Uh, I will tell you this, uh, every year this happens at every open enrollment. Um, you've, we've got employee benefit booklets from last year. Please throw them away. If you go online and plug in last year's number, it's going to be a big red thing saying, please don't use this. This is not for this year's open enrollment, and we still have people who use it. <laughs> so please be sure to use the current confirmation number, the 96893 that's on your booklet, and uh, go through and confirm your benefits there. Uh, again, and, uh, we're going to leave the website open until the second Friday in November, but please try to confirm your benefits as soon as you can. If you do go in and confirm your benefits and decide before November the 9th that you want to make a change on it, you're eligible to do that. Go back in and reconfirm because our system is only going to pull out the last confirmation that you do. And then having said that, I guess that was my last slide. I'll leave that up there. And uh, uh, Frederick, is there anything you'd like to add? I think at this point in time, I know we have a microphone. If there's any questions, I think they want to make sure that they get uh, picked up on the audio. And uh, Sue, did you want to say anything before questions? No, just here for questions. And thank you again for renewing with Blue Cross. <clears throat> Mike, check. Hello, my name is Brenda. And I have a question about AFLAC group critical illness insurance. <laughs> so let's say that I'm a type two diabetic and I never had a heart attack or stroke, and I take out the insurance with AFLAC, and after January 1st, I have a heart attack. Is that pre-existing? Would it cover me, or it wouldn't? So, so you're talking about the critical illness policy? Yes. Right, the critical illness policy uh, is set up that if you have a heart attack, stroke, um, let me see, heart attack, stroke, uh, kidney, major organ failure, that if indeed that happens, whatever the face amount on that policy is that you purchase, that that's what it's actually going to pay you. It's, it's like if I go in there and buy a $10,000 policy, and then I come in and I have the, uh, the heart attack or the stroke, then it actually pays the face amount to you for the diagnosis. So they wouldn't try to link it to the diabetes, like the diabetes caused it. That's what I'm asking. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Were they trying to debate not paying it because the person had type 2 diabetes, they tried to no, make it that No, no, because it? what it is is the, the claim is not, it, it's based upon the diagnosis. So if you, if you buy the, purchase the policy, mm -hmm. and then you subsequently have a heart attack, that's a medical diagnosis, then the benefit's paid based on okay. that diagnosis. And, and um, I believe when you go through the uh, open enrollment, if you've currently not enrolled, they will ask you a series of mm -hmm. questions. And as long as you answer the questions, effect, you know, truthfully, and they issue the policy, that's going to be that that's going to be a covered, okay, a covered benefit. And I don't know what the questions are off the top of my head, but as long as you answer the questions uh, uh, appropriately and truthfully, then if indeed you have that, they issue the policy, you're going to have a covered claim. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm, I'm new to Douglas County, so this is my first enrollment, and I'm debating the HMO or the POS, and I've just got, it's a two-part question on the HMO. I believe on the HMO there are some specialists like gynecology, maybe dermatology, that you don't need a referral from your primary care, so I wanted to check that. And then I wanted to um, ask about what's the difference in the dental plan under HMO or POS? Okay. I I'm an old man, and my hearing is terrible, and I think I got the questions, but I'm going to repeat them kind of. You want to know about what specialist you can see under the HMO without getting a referral. And I'm an old man, but I believe it's OBGYN. It's going to be your mental health doctors. It's going to be termino uh, dermatology, and I think op optometrist. Correct. But for a <clears throat> medical condition of the eye. Right. So it would be for a disease. So those four specialists do not require referral and you can self-refer to those. Just make sure you're seeing an in-network provider. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second half of the question, could you repeat that again, please? Just, is there a, a difference between the dental benefits in each plan? 
HMO or BOS. Oh, I see. <clears throat> under under the dental plans, we have two options. One, I think, has a higher out-of-pocket, and it's a little bit higher cost, but they actually have the same network of, of, of dentists in those networks. And you always want to try to use a Blue Cross Blue Shield dental provider, and here's why. Um, <clears throat> A dentist can charge whatever they want to, and we have your all's policy set up to pay a reasonable amount. Well, when I go to get my transmission fixed, I know what a reasonable amount is, but these transmission shops don't because the prices are all over the board. And so when you're using a dentist, um, um, a dentist that's in network has agreed to a reasonable price with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And if your policy with Blue Cross says it's gonna cover 100% of those cleanings, if you go to a dentist that's in the Blue Cross network, it's gonna cover 100%. You're not gonna have anything for you to pay. But if I go to a dentist and he says that I think to clean teeth and to do the oral exam that $150 is reasonable, but Blue Cross says, well, I think it's probably closer to 120, then they can balance bill you that extra 30, $30 for the charge. So try to use an in-network dentist when you can. If you're using a, a dentist that's not in network, you can ask them up front what they're charging for it. You can check with Blue Cross what they're going to allow and then decide if that's what you want to do. Right. I understand the reasonable and customary, but I'm currently under my husband's Blue Cross Blue Shield POS plan. So I guess my question is, if my dentist is under POS, would they usually be under HMO or could that be a totally different well, they, they call the dental networks PPO, I believe. Correct. And, and the networks for your, your Blue Cross plans are, are the same for both, both right. high right. and low That's options. That's what I thought. Dental is different. There's yeah. no yeah. difference Yeah, they actually refer to HMO them as a PPO dental plan, and they're all PPO dentists. Thank you. <clears throat> Got two hands back there, Frederick. I had a question about the My Incentive Plan. Um, for a flu shot, do you have to fill out a form to get the reimbursement? Because I have yet to get one from last year or this year. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing you're supposed to get a check back, but I have yet to get anything either year. A, a couple of things. Have you gone online and looked to see if you've got money in your incentive account? Is that different than the flexible spending? Yes. Um, <laughs> And let me ask it this way. Have you registered on the Blue Cross Blue Shield website as a yes. member? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to turn this over to Sue, and you can maybe tell the member where they could see it, maybe. Sure thing. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, first of all, there was a problem in the system last year. But if, you, if there's a reimbursement that didn't happen, you know, certainly see me after. I'll take your name and information, and we'll get together and research that for you. But so I just want this process is a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. So, um, and we do have a presentation available to everybody that we can send out and maybe even condense it to a one pager. But the first step would be to um, register for the Blue Cross Blue Shield website. And then once you go on there, you can, um, the information will be there to show you how much you have available to you. And once you have a claim, a check will be reimbursed within 30 days of after you having a claim. There's also a customer service number that you can call if you're not seeing any funds out there for you. About and the customer service the, number? About how long does it take after you get your flu shot done? It takes about 30 days. About 30 days? Yes. And the biometric form that he mentioned earlier, that's for the physical? That is for the physical, okay. correct. And then so for, the, for that form though, you do have to go to a separate website. That's the Maxim, the Maxim website, which we will send you a link for you to access. Once you go on there, you do have to register every year. Um, and so if you've already registered once, I take that back, you just have to confirm who you are. Once a year, they receive a list of every member that's eligible. So you just have to reattest that you are eligible for the benefit. And then once you do that, then it takes you through the screens that allow you to access the form that you will print out and take to the doctor with you. Now, just um, an area where some folks get tripped up is when it's asking you for your member ID, don't put in the three-digit code, alpha code that's prior to your member ID. Just list the alpha numbers. And Sue, I, I think that that's one of the things that's been a little confusing is that 
you have to renew with the My Incentive Plan on an annual basis. And I believe, uh, I, if I remember correctly, when I went on to renew, it tells you not to put those, those letters in there. So Correct. it will remind you not to do so. That's right, yes. And another reminder is um, you'll also see a pop-up that lets you know that you should send in, once you have your screening completed, you could send it in, your provider could send it in, but you have six months to submit that information. Right. You, you have to go to the website every year, and there's, it is a new link every year. So last year it ended in 2018. Mm -hmm. This year the link ends in 2019, and you should access it. You can go in and access it January 1, 2019. Did I miss somebody in the back? Can, can, I, can I ask a quick question? When you all got your benefit statements last year, does anybody here remember seeing an ID cards inside of there that had information on this? How many people here opened their benefit statements and looked at them last year? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> what, what we did last year is when we put the benefit statements out, we stuck an ID card in there that actually told you in, in detail what your My Incentive account benefits were. And on the back side of it, it gave you the website to go to to actually register for that. I think what we're going to do this year is when we give you your benefit statements, with Frederick's approval, I think I'm going to staple that card on the outside of the envelope so you might see it. But the, we, we didn't put the information in your employee benefit handbook because if you're like me, I'm going to get this. It's going to go in a drawer and I'm never going to see it again. And so what we thought would make more sense is to give you something to put in your wallet so that when you do go to your doctor, you're getting ready to go to your to get it. You go, oh, I can pull the form off and I've got it right here in my wallet on how to get it. So um, uh, in December, when you get your, your, your benefit statements from this year's open enrollment, you're going to see an ID card, and I call it an ID card. It's going to be an information card. It's going to be generic, and it's going to tell you, again, what the incentive rewards are. And on the back side, it's going to tell you how to pull the form that you need to get your biometric screenings to get your $100 and it's going to have a customer service number so that if you do have your flu shot during the year, you don't see the money show up in your account. That's a customer service number you can call and, and then ask if indeed, you know, where your money is. I hope that helps. I think we've got a mic. So the, that, the number that you called, that is for the biometric screenings? It, yes. So they're the ones who make it available to you, and once that's um, available, they, it makes it to the vendor who puts the funds in the account. It's your Blue Cross Blue Shield customer service number, because the, once you have the claim, it is claims-based. So once the claim is processed, it automatically feeds to the incentive account team that processes the check. Denise, we'll get back to you on that. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Okay. Um, <sighs> well, um, my husband, I have my husband. I can't hear you. He can't hear. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, my husband is on for dental and vision, but not medical. Now, last year they did not charge a fee for that. Is that going to be the same this year? You know, you're saying it's a $25 fee if you have your spouse on to your medical and stuff. Right. That, that spousal surcharge is for the medical only and not okay. for any dental or vision. Okay. And so I, I wasn't clear on that. Okay, great, great. So that'll be the same. Now, the other Correct. thing, the other thing is all these numbers and call here, go here. It would be really nice if they would be one central location and that, you know, whether it's the app or anything else, instead of like 10 different cards or one is in the, you know, the booklet or one is on a card, it needs to be centrally located. 
that you know you can call one person and you could get to it, or one website, yep. and it's got all the buttons where you could go to it. That it, is definitely it, a fair point. So you will have your member ID card, and generally your customer service number there can direct you to wherever it is that you have to go. And something that you're going to notice different when you start calling um, customer service this year is we do have a new Anthem Health Guide, and that's really just an enhanced customer service model. So now when you call into our customer service team, they'll have different edits that pop into your system. Now that you have the My Health Advantage, so, you know, Felicia spoke about all the discounts that are going to be available to you. You know, your claims are going to be looked at if there's um, a generic available and you're currently taking a brand or if there are services that you haven't had rendered yet, um, any, you know, specific test based on your age that you need to have done that customer service rep will also make you aware of that. And then they'll also make you aware of, you know, all the other resources that are available to you at Blue Cross, um, you know, such as if someone is a diabetic. We do have a nurse team that is there um, and ready to engage with you with education, answer any questions. They could set up a time with you. Um, if one of our nurse coaches has tried to reach out to you and um, you weren't available, our customer service rep can see that and they try to schedule a time between you two or warm transfer you directly to one of the nurse coaches. They're available. But I'm sorry, to answer, finish answering your question. So the, member, the customer service number that's on your ID card, and then I really think that what MSI has prepared, um, if you could just keep that alongside your... With, with your member ID card, that will also be helpful with the incentives. Well, so there's the Blue Cross Blue Shield, yeah. Yes. So right now, unfortunately, the incentive account isn't integrated into the Engage. That is functionality that we're hoping for in the coming year. So right now, you know, the Engage can get you to Live Health Online. It can get you to customer service. You could live chat with customer service if you prefer doing that. Um, but right now, it is, you know, the Blue Cross website you can access. The Engage will be easy access. The incentive is a separate and Sue, let me say that, uh, and Tam, thank you for the feedback because yes. as we meet as a benefits committee, as we meet uh, amongst ourselves, these are the things that we talk about over the course of the year to try to make things better. So um, centralizing that website and centralize, finding a central location for the employees to go and making it more user friendly is something that we'll work on as we move forward. Um, I do want to see the things that you mentioned about uh, my incentive, the literature that you have. Yes. If you could, if you have that electronically, if you could send that to me, I'll make sure that everybody gets it. We'll Absolutely. send that out. I uh, also want to remind uh, the employees that are here and those who are looking at this uh, video about the uh, health equity uh, flexible spending account. We have information regarding that. Maria's in the back of the room. She has uh, literature regarding that. Please pick that up. Uh, as you uh, make your way out. Um, anything else? I, I just want to, if I could, clarify one more thing, because I, I hear what you're saying about all the different sites, but the, the, um, I don't think we really fully answered your question in terms of do I have to fill out forms for getting my incentives, but everything is claim-driven. Your flu shot, your mammogram, if you get a colorectal screening, those incentives are based, you don't have to do anything. You get that exam done, the claim comes into Blue Cross, and that money is to be put in your account. In your case, it didn't show up, so we want to investigate and find out why it did not. Uh, and then if you have a question on those, those questions can go right to the Blue Cross Blue Shield customer service number. The ID card that we're going to give you 
in December has only one purpose. It's to tell you to, what website to go to to download the form to get your biometric screening. And that, that's really the only purpose of that ID card. But everything else is going to be funneled right through Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia. But um, we, and we, we have these incentives set up with several different insurance companies, and all of them struggle with this. All of them have to go to an outside vendor to get this form, and uh, 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 it's not unique. But, we're, but the card that you're going to get with your benefit statement is going to show you how to pull down that biometric screening form so that you can take that to your physician and fax it in and then get your $100 incentive on that. But everything else should be handled through Blue Cross Blue Shield customer service. Yes. Thank you. I think that's all we have. So if there are no further questions, again, thank you all for coming. And uh, Marie and I will be available uh, as well as MSI as we move forward through this open enrollment process. Someone asked me about the individual meetings. The individual meetings will begin next week. I'll be sending out information regarding that. The individual meetings are just uh, if you choose not to go online to, uh, to enroll, which we're encouraging everybody to do. Very, very user-friendly process going online. It's quick. It's easy. Uh, but if you choose to want to uh, speak with one of the enrollers, that uh, schedule will be coming out via email uh, at some point this week. Okay? Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. I'll get her name in.